Hi, and welcome to Cryptobiography. I'm your host, Brandon Starr. This is episode 277 of Cryptobiography, and it's part 11 of The Smallest Magician. And here we go. MB, I have eyes that can watch during the day, but if I prepare you, would you help watch for the assassins to arrive at night? MB nodded, though she felt a little unsure. Her night vision would surely be a help, but she'd not done anything like this before. But she also had a question. Prepare me how, though? I have a couple of spells to teach you. Well, one spell to teach you and one spell to show you, technically. She nodded. Okay. I figure we have a minimum of three weeks before they arrive, even if they sent the request immediately, even if it gets there swiftly, and even if they head our way right away. And be nodded again. What spells do you have in mind? The first one's a camouflage spell. Not quite invisibility, but it's a spell I can actually teach you at your current level, and it should be especially effective at night. The second one is a spell I will cast. It will give you a small ball, a little like a marble, and I'll teach you how to use it to send a message to me. Envy felt a thrill roll down her back and even down her tail. I'm excited to start, Master. Let's have a bit of food and then start. And they did. Eventually, you'll be able to draw magical energy from yourself if need be, but that is exhausting, he said. If possible, find some magic around you. Eventually, I'll show you how to make a reservoir of magic, but in spelling items is more advanced. For now, look around, find a bit of spare magic, and use that. When you go out at night, I'll send you with some items that have some magic for you to use. And B looked around. As she suspected, the candle on the desk glowed magically. She pointed, and he nodded. This time, think about using the energy as a sort of blanket over you. When you're inside it, you can't be seen by anyone else. You're safe. You're comfortable. You're invisible. Embi wasn't sure she understood, but tried anyway. The energy flowed out of the candle towards her. She thought about being safe, being invisible, being immune to any spying eyes. The energy started to roll over her, and it was strangely comforting. She looked down. But she could immediately tell it was a mistake. The warm feeling vanished, and she could tell the energy, or some of it, was ebbing back into the candle. We all get impatient sometimes, Donegal said. You were doing fairly well. I hadn't seen a change in your appearance yet, but I saw the energy move and start to wrap around you. Then how will I know when I have it right? When it's really done well, you'll feel warm and comforted, and you'll feel like no one can see you. But also, the world will itself feel a little transparent. You can't become camouflaged yourself and still keep all of your vision. But don't worry, you'll be able to see well enough to spot the assassins, he added. And as you can imagine, this sort of spell actually does keep you warm and has a few other side benefits. I've actually slept outside on cold nights with nothing but the spell for protection, and it kept me warm and dry. You can keep a spell going while you're asleep? Not at first, but eventually you learn how to do that. For now, practice the camouflage spell. Let me watch. I'll let you know when you get it. And she did practice it. It was a strange sensation. The energy rolled over her, covering her. At first it was warm. Then it seemed to dull both her hearing and her sight. That's it, Donna Gall said heartily. You practically disappear into that chair. If I were an enemy and burst in the door, I doubt I'd even notice you were there. Try standing up and keep the spell going. She stood up, but... The spell immediately drained away. Not to worry, Donegal said. Concentration is a skill you develop over time. In this case, movement is a distraction. You'll have to keep the spell going regardless. Of course, you'll be less invisible if you move. That's unavoidable. So that's your next goal. Keep practicing that. I'll make the communication orbs, and I'll teach you how to use them in the next couple of days. The next few days, she exhausted herself, trying the camouflage spell over and over again. She did it for Donegal as well, who confirmed her progress and gave her a few pointers. And I think we need to see if you can pull the energy for yourself, he said. I can send you with the preloaded items, but if you lose them or use them or have them taken from you, I don't want you left without magic. I'm ready? Mm, you have to be. She must have seemed as nervous as she was, because he laid a comforting hand on her shoulder. MB, I can tell from the progress you've made, from the efforts you take, you can do this. Normally I would teach this somewhat later, but 
there's nothing I would teach you between now and then that you, that would, that you need to be able to do this. It's tricky and can be frustrating. That's why I would teach it later. But you can do this. And be nodded. Can we start now? Are you rested enough? Yes. Then yes. He sat down and closed his eyes. He seemed to be thinking about what to say or how to say it. If you see magic in the world, you can manipulate it. This you already do with objects which have seen magic recently. You might find magic out in the world as well. There's magic in this room which you haven't noticed yet. But it's what drew me to this house, to purchase it above others. When you look for magic, your eye will be drawn to objects because that's how we see mundanely every day. But there's magic in the air, in the water, even in the earth. It is much more difficult to see and it's rather thin and wispy looking, particularly in the air. Some places have more than others, why I don't know. For situations like those, we can also pull magic from ourselves, but it is exhausting and more advanced, and I will teach you that later. You'll need to be able to see the magic in the air, in the room. Look for slight changes, like cobwebs hanging. They usually don't move, which makes them even more difficult to see. And be tried. She looked around the room with her magical sight, but she couldn't see anything like he described. She even rechecked the candles and the other items in the room she knew had magic to ensure her sight was being used correctly. It was. I'm having trouble, Master, she said. I'm not seeing it. It is as difficult as I said. Please keep trying. Remember how, once you first saw magic, it became much easier to see it again? This will be the same way. You'll have trouble seeing it until you see it the first time. Then you'll wonder how you weren't seeing it all along. And be thought back as he suggested. He was right. It had been so difficult to see magic at first, and now it was a reflex. She just had to see this new magic one time. She kept at it, looking all around the room, trying different things like squinting her eyes, winking, and blinking, and everything else she could think of. After a while, Donegal seemed amused. That's a familiar look, he said. I'm pretty sure I did all those same things when I got this assignment from my master. I can't spark this light for you, but I'll tell you this. You're on the right track. Try everything. This one's difficult, partly because there isn't an easy answer. But if you think of magic as something that loves to hide, something mischievous, it helps. Keep trying, he said, rising from his chair. I'll get you some food and drink. You may be here a long time, and there isn't a better place inside the house to try. He left, and Emby continued. She got out of her chair and tried different angles. She thought about magic as something mischievous that tries to hide, but it didn't seem to help. She didn't know how to connect Donegal's hint to the magic around her. And that's the end of the story for this week. I hope you're enjoying it. If you have any comments or questions about this episode or previous episodes, cryptobiography at gmail.com or hit us up on Facebook or Twitter. And thanks for listening. Words of Music, copyright 2022, cryptobiography, cryptobiography LLC, all rights reserved. Characters and events are fictional, fictionalized, or satirical. <laughs>